All right, welcome to week two of uh, Oldies But Goodies. This week we're going to tie a partridge and orange, and we'll kind of get to that in a minute. But before we start, um, I wanted to kind of go over what a Hungarian partridge is uh, for the pattern. So the bird overall looks like this. Um, typically, you're going to get a lot of bigger feathers uh, that don't work extremely well. Uh, to tie a particular size uh, and when you do find a particular size uh, feather it usually comes from one area you can see so if you got a material kit I've I got actually two of these here that I had to actually I dig through to get the right sizes uh, of uh, barbs uh, to fit the size 10. <clears throat> now a size 10 is going to be a little bit easier uh, say than a size 16 to find the right barbs off the actual hackle and these feathers are extremely delicate I mean you can see how it just I mean I've kind of torched this bird but um, but anyway I just wanted to kind of give you a reference of what it looks like the actual bird itself and uh, also just kind of say that if you're into soft hackle flies partridge is uh, probably the number one soft hackle that people go after and it's uh it's actually be, it's starting to get quite expensive you know you're looking now for quality bird um oh, probably about 45 to 50 dollars to get a quality bird um it's also important if you get into these um these style of flies or spider patterns soft tackle patterns and you're wanting to use partridge that uh, you actually get a bird or get feathers from somebody that has the actual skin um one of the issues is is that uh, when they uh, strip strip the birds down and uh, bag them up, uh, quite frankly, I used to, actually I used to have several and I got rid of them. I was looking, I was trying to dig around and find one, uh, but you get you get a bag that's pretty much full of junk, and you're going to pay about four or five dollars for a bag of junk that may have about ten feathers in there tops, um, typically uh, that are that are useful to you, and so you want to kind of keep that in mind. Um, so they are, it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, Brahma hen is uh, an excellent substitute for these larger sizes. And so uh, anyway, so there's just kind of some food for thought. So let me get set up here. Let me get my light swung around and zoom in. Whoa. There we go. Cool. So this pattern uh, dates back to um, around the turn of the 20th century. Um I think Wikipedia has it at like 1895, but no one really knows where this pattern came from. You can actually tie these on straight shanks or curved shanks. Um, and uh, it's called a partridge in orange because we're literally going to use Hungarian partridge feather and orange floss. Uh, back in the day, they used silk. Uh, quality tying silk is a, a bit expensive these days. Um, and so there's other options like uh, uni floss, uh, and this, this you know this would work fine. Uh, if you're going to tie this on smaller sizes, just orange thread will will work fine. Uh, and there's also uh, basically any color in the rainbow that you want uh, to tie this on. You could, I mean you could tie these in purple, so you could have a purple and partridge. You could have a a, a blue and part. I mean whatever you want. Um, but uh, but this has been a top producing fly for a very, very, very long time. And so we're going to kind of stick with that. So we're going to actually use uni stretch to do this. It's actually very friendly. It's a little bit more friendly than regular floss. Sorry for the sniffles. But uh, uh, it's very friendly to use. Uh, it helps lay a nice body and everything else. Uh, I'll show you how to do a flashback version. Uh, we'll cover the flashback version a little bit more in depth uh, next week when we do the uh, hare's ear spider. Um, so we'll kind of do back-to-back -back weeks of spider patterns and uh, kind of clear the decks on spider patterns and uh, hopefully get you some uh, some good information and uh, some confidence because uh, spider patterns can be a little tough and, and uh, partridge feathers can be a little delicate. Okay, so with that said... Let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm just gonna start my thread 
back in the thorax area. Now the thorax area on this fly is going to be right about here. Whoop, got stuff rolling on me. Uh, about two bodkin widths behind the eye. We, we want to leave about a bodkin width for the actual head itself. And we want another bodkin width for the prop and the feather as we roll it around. You can uh, make these uh, as thick hackled as you like. You can thin them out, and I'll show you how to do both uh, during this demonstration. So we're just going to get our thread started, and we're going to work back just a little bit. You can see I'm only back about the front third of the fly, roughly. And then we're going to work our thread back forward. Um, so you can do actually do a, a flashback version. If you want to do a flashback version, uh, you'd want to tie your flash in. See if I got a piece of flat. Yeah, I do right here. Hang on. Sometimes it's a little impromptu. So we'd want to tie our flash in just right here, right on top. Work back, work forward, and so. Every time we add a little layer right up here in this front position where the thorax is, all that's going to do is help us build the prop. And I'll, I'll get to that in a few minutes. So uh, this is an option. So if you want to have a flashback, this is where you would tie it in. I'm going to take this out. Uh, we're, I'll, I'll cover that more extensively next week. Um, so now what we need is a rib. Uh, again, uh, this is going to be an option. Uh, you will see a lot of people not even have a rib, especially on the smaller versions. Uh, this pattern is probably uh, in the range, typically tied between a 12 and a 20. Uh, 20 being on the very small side, um, 12 being on the large size. Obviously, we're tying this on a 10. Um, if you decide to uh, join Fly Fishers International or FFI, and do their tying awards program, they're going to have you tied on a 10, which is actually pretty friendly to do. So the true color for the rib is silver. And so we're going to go ahead and use silver. And I'm just going to pull off about, oh, I don't know, five or six inches. We don't need a ton here. And with my thread being in the forward position, I'm going to go ahead and tie this in uh, on the bottom side, and about that 5:30, 6 o'clock mark, and I'm going to wrap back forward. Now, if you're not comfortable with building this fly from the front, well, let me, let, I'm trying. Let me rephrase that. There's several ways to build this fly. You can actually just go ahead and tie this guy all the way down if you like. If you're not comfortable with doing it the way that I'm going to do it, so you can tie this all the way down. And then you bring your thread back forward. Uh, what this does is creates uh, more bulk in the body, uh, which we don't really want on this pattern. We want it to be very thin, uh, especially when you get down into the smaller sizes. So I'm going to show you how to tie it in all up front, and then we'll work it back. So next what we need is our floss, or in this case, uh, uni stretch orange. And I'm going to pull out about 10 inches. And I'm going to go ahead and put that right back into the little slit on the side of the uh, spool that they leave us. Uh-oh. And what I'm looking to do here is I'm going to tie this in on the top side. Now you can tie it in close like this, or you can see how it's starting to fray out a little bit. Just uh, lick your fingers a little bit or get a, a sponge or damp paper uh, towel and you can kind of bring all that back forward so that we don't have so much of that uh, hanging out front. But you can also, if it's a little easier for you, you can also just put a couple of loose wraps in. Just grab both sides kind of like so and just draw this until it meets up, whichever one works best for you. And now we can tie this in. Okay. Now it does help to have some kind of a clip of some kind, a material clip hanging out back so that it can grab your material 
and uh, leave it resting down on the underside a little bit. And so the idea behind this is that we can just start to actually just tie this all in without the thread. And we want to try to keep this reasonably flat just to keep the lumps and bumps out. Now as we go back and then stop at the back and come forward, uh, you want to have just a slight overlay. If you can see that right where my, the edge of my uh, floss is compared to where it is laying down on the shank itself, um, that's kind of what you want. You want to have a little slight uh, overage on that. And we're just going to wrap this back until we get this to about the barb. Again, this is meant to be a thin body. This can actually represent a mayfly or a caddis. And so, again, you can tie these in olive and purple and blues and pinks and all, all the fun stuff uh, and have them be uh, somewhat effective. Uh, I'm not sure it'll be quite as effective as the partridge in orange. I mean, that's one of the reasons why it's been around for so long and, uh, and we brought it into this session. So when you, get, when you bring your th uh, floss back to about the barb, what we're gonna do is we're gonna reverse course and start bringing it forward. And if you're having a hard time with little lumps and bumps, what you can do is as, as you're bringing it forward, just kind of loosen up just a touch on your, uh, the firmness that you have your hands and just kind of wiggle it and it'll kind of help all that floss situate itself around the shank. What we're trying to do is just to, again, avoid any lumps and bumps. Okay. I'm going to try to speed this up just a fuzz so that we don't have a, a super long session like we did on week one. It was about 45 minutes. I tried not to go that long, but I uh, decided on a whim to go ahead and show several versions of it and give you some extra techniques and advice. So I uh, hope it helped. So as we come to the front, what I like to do, and you don't have to do this, you can bring it over the top and just cross over like so. I actually like to take my material and wrap it around front and then cross over. Um, it just gives a little extra lockdown power. And you can have, you can build a little torpedo shape if you like. You can see I've got a little lump right there and that's, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but uh, you want to try to avoid that as much as possible. So at this point, just bring your thread forward a couple of wraps, reverse your floss material and come back over the top. This just helps ensure that it doesn't pull out nope. and that it's uh, easy to easy to manage when you do uh, trim it off and we can tie that all in or we can, you can actually leave that little a little tiny bit out for later so now we got to rib the fly uh, typically you want to counter rib it uh, you can it, it it's not going to matter a ton on this uh, we just want to try to get uh, to five turns on the body. That's the optimal number is five turns for the body. What I, what I try to do is uh, actually go six and bring my sixth turn up front just a little bit so that way I can wrap back over it and encapsulate that so I can build the, the front part of the fly back into the thorax uh, or uh, abdomen just to fuzz. And, uh, and have the fly be seamless because we don't, you know, we don't want to have a, uh, any gap there. So there I've got five, and now here's my six. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off on top as well. Just a few turns forward. And then with the wire, you can actually just uh, put, some, put a little tension on your bobbin. I'm gonna get up close so you can see it. But uh, I've got my hand there, and I'm just going to kind of pull down, just straight down. You can see I'm putting pressure on it, and just hold that pressure, and just helicopter that off. And uh, that should work. So at this point, um, there's several ways to go about this. Now, one of the I'm going to burn a feather here, so don't do this. Just watch, so you can see what people what I'm talking about. Um, one of the earlier ways that was fairly common was to take your 
uh, partridge feather and tie it in right here so that everything stuck out front like so. Now, I don't prefer this method for several reasons. Um, and we don't really need to get into them per se, but, uh, but one is now I've got all this stuff sticking out front. And normally this little tip here has already been cut off. But, uh, but everything's sticking out front, and now I have to build my little prop, which is actually an option. You don't need, actually have to have a prop, but we're going to do that because this is, uh, again, I'm just kind of following the FFI uh, standard. Um, so you can do it that way. I don't like to do it that way because now we've got stuff sticking out front and we still have to do work in the, on the backside uh, in the thorax area and uh, it, it can just be a hindrance and things can get in the way and uh, I just think there's a better way to do that. So we're going to go ahead and do it the way I prefer. Oh, I got a little... And something nicked my thread looks like. And so at this point, what we want to do is bring our thread back into the thorax. I'm going to come over that sixth wrap just a little bit so that I'm building it into the actual body. And you can see how my thread's now crossed over into the orange. So uh, if you want a prop, you can use any kind of dubbing that you have, especially if you're going to be changing colors. Um, so you can do that. You can do, um, boy, there's a lot here. You could, you could use peacock hurl if you wanted. You could actually use some ostrich hurl if you wanted. I've seen both. Uh, ice dub, regular dub. Uh, but for the FF, FFI standard, uh, what they use is uh, hair's mask. And we'll get a little bit more in depth with this in the next two weeks. And uh, traditionally, it's we're looking for these lighter lighter colors and, and we honestly we just don't need much here so i'm just going to kind of sneak my scissors in there and i'll just clip that out and then pull pull it off because we just again we don't need much now you can absolutely decide whether or not you want the guard hairs in place personally i find that all these little fine guard hairs that are, you can see sticking out uh, they kind of get in the way uh, as far as i'm concerned I actually prefer more of the under fur on this particular pattern. So uh, you can go either way, but uh, if, you, if you're going to take these guard hairs out and uh, you know you want to be kind of frugal with your material, which I don't blame you, material gets expensive. Uh, take these and put them in like a little, um, get this off my finger, but a, a little ramekin or something like that, or a little baggie um, that you can, you know, where you can save it for later and typically you're not going to save those guard hairs uh, to use by themselves uh, but what those are great for is adding to a different dubbing blend so you just take those little gar guard hairs and mix it in or blend it in with uh, some other guard hairs and so all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take what I've cut out which is basically the under fur and a few guard hairs is fine I just don't like too many but I'm going to kind of pick and pull and pinch in between my fingers and it can get a little messy and it can be a little difficult if you're not used to it uh, just to get something that's about like this and then lined up and again you can do that just by pinching and pulling resetting pinching and pulling and resetting and so uh, so we can do that now natural fibered uh, dubbing can be a little difficult to work with so if you need to use a little bit of wax or something go ahead and use that here and we'll just put it right on our thread right here, and, and, you can, and you can do that. I'm going to turn that to the side just to kind of dub this on. And we don't need a ton. We just want to basically build this little thorax, and we can work back and forth just a little bit. And uh, it's, it basically just builds a little prop, kind of like so. And the job of the prop, if you got too much sticking out front, make sure you grab and pull it to the rear, and you can groom it. And you can make this as big or as little as you like. Just make try just whatever. Which, if you want to make it big or little, whatever it is you're doing, just try to make it consistent. And that can be kind of a challenge in itself. But um, so now that we have this here like that, uh, we've got our little prop, and the the 
object or the idea of the prop is to help keep those fibers splayed open a little bit so they pulsate a little bit better. Now when you get into the smaller sizes, say, I want to add a little more dubbing when I'm talking, but um, when you get into the smaller sizes, say, uh, oh, 16, 18, 20, so on, uh, I, I, t I, I see more often than not that people are not using um, using the prop as much. And so um, it's, it's really up to you. You can add a little bit if you like uh, to kind of give a little thorax color, so on and so forth. Oh, and I, f I forgot to mention, and I apologize for this. If you wanted to do the flashback, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, I don't know what I did with it. I set the piece down. I'll just cut a new, I'll cut a new little strand. And I, all this is here is flashaboo. Uh, so you would have tied this in underneath. We would have either wrapped it all the way back with our thread, uh, or actually uh, we could have tied this in just just like this with our floss for the body. But uh, but at this point, what we would have done, I'm gonna tie this in just for quick second is that when he gets to the back you'd fold this over and bring it forward like so before you uh, rib the fly and again I'm gonna cover that a little bit more in depth uh, next week so if uh, you missed out on that part it's not not a super big deal so I'm gonna dub just a little bit more that that ball is just a little bit small for a size 10 I think it'd be a little more adequate for a 14 Take a turn off. Um, so there, that's just kind of some of the uh, fundamentals of a soft hackle and, and what you'll see. Uh, and it's not for just the partridge and orange. It's, uh, these techniques are used um, for many, many soft hackles. Um, it's just sort of a, a basic building block, if you will, uh, to, to tie this fly. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, there we go. So now let's get into the actual partridge feather. So what I've got here is just a white speckled partridge. Uh, you can use a brown speckled. Um, I think it's more commonly seen on this pattern and, and other patterns like this, which are often referred to as a spider or a, a North Country spider or a North Ireland uh uh, spider uh, and anyone I've seen them all that named um, but uh, what we want to do is just take our partridge feather and if you're not sure uh, so if you got a material kit you're already gonna have the feathers uh, the, the size that you need but if uh, but if you didn't and what what we want to do is uh, or even if you did what we want to do is uh, come down and start to strip off all this stuff down here so we're gonna take off this little phyllo feather on the back we can just remove it some people like to save that for stuff like tailing and whatever, and I, that's really up to you. But um, I, quite frankly, I think they're about junk. Uh, but we're just going to strip this away, kind of like so. So we have a feather that looks about like this. I like to get rid of these weaker-looking barbs. Um, they're you can kind of you'll be able to tell once you strip that away. They're, they're, they'll be super light in color, kind of super airy. And I, I prefer this uh, heavier speckling on there. And again, the white is uh, just—it's uh, just kind of more in line with uh, this pattern. But uh, but you can use the brown too if you like. So what we want to do is strip the front fibers back so that we have kind of this little uh, airplane wing and this sticking out front. The way I like to cut this, and you'll see. Uh, some like Davy McPhail, they'll cut it super close, and, and you can do that uh, if you like. But uh, if you're just getting into fly tying and, and starting to learn that, I don't, uh, or start to learn soft tackles, I don't prefer that as much. Uh, I prefer to either just cut it at a slant. I'm just going to get this down a little bit better. Either cut it at a slant like so, like that, or make it more of kind of like a spear tip. Sorry, it's a little difficult to do and show it with everything in my way here. 
so it's kind of like that. And there's actually a method to my madness here. So at this point, what we want to do is we want to, we want to tie this down on the bare stem. See, I missed one right there, but we can get rid of that real quick. There we go. But you'll see that there's I've got some bare stem exposed right there. And I'm going to aim my feather down. So you should have something that looks about like this. I'm going to aim my feather down so that the spear is aiming down. And you want to have your thread, before you do this, you want to have your thread all the way back up just slightly into that dubbing ball. So when we aim our thread down like so, on the tire side, I place a couple of wraps over, and I can kind of adjust that going to the top as I've worked my thread forward just a few turns. Put one more in for good measure. You can see as I pulled down, that popped up. Now the reason I like this is because now I can grab this and more often than not, it gets everything out of my way. You can see that. And now I can work this to the back. And it, the better you get at this, it can leave virtually no, uh, nothing to cut off. So if I was tying this for a fishing fly, I'd actually just leave that there and just call it gravy. But uh, I'm going to get rid of that and snip that little piece off. Okay, and now we're going to bring our thread back forward again, just a couple of turns. So at this point, you've got a big decision, and you got and you're going to need to keep in mind this stem is extremely f fragile. <coughs> Excuse me. And so <clears throat> if you want a very thick hackle uh, on your fly. What we need to do, nope, let's see if I can show you that. Nope, it's not going to work. No, you can see I've got that one sticking out. If you got one sticking out, try to take care of that now because it can kind of mess everything up going forward. Okay, so what we need to do is if you want to have it really full and thick is we need to do what's called doubling the hackle. And it just means doing what I just did. We're going to take the barbs, we're going to stand the stem straight up and just fold everything to the back. And there's numerous methods on how to do this and approach it. And so I'm going to try to do this without breaking that stem. Uh, so as I roll this around in a clockwise manner, it can be pretty difficult to keep all these fibers moving to the back. And so one thing you can do is as you come around on the back side, just place your finger there and then pick up the stem from the other side and start to work it forward. Uh, you can also start to rotate this just with your thumb and index like so. And as we come around again and you kind of play with it and splay it open, that's going to be a, considered a pretty thick uh, soft tackle. Uh, now if you want to get to more of the spider look, okay, I'm going to back this off and hopefully it doesn't break. But uh, the idea is, is that we uh, break it now and then we can replace it now rather than, uh, you know, have the dubbing ball in place and everything else. Uh, but you can just lift this straight up. And what you want to do is we're going to strip from the, from the bottom of the stem up on the side that you're going to rotate uh, the stem around the shank. So if I were to kind of twist this and, it was, and you're facing it, right, you're looking at it on the video, it would be the right side. And you got to be very gentle here, uh, and it can take a little practice because you will break the stem. Um, now, on these kind of patterns, I do not like using um, hackle pliers. And the reason why is because a pair of hackle pliers has some weight to it. And if it slips out of your hand a little bit or whatever, it can actually provide enough tension, enough torque to actually pop that stem. Uh, and then you're kind of dead in the water and that feather's junk. So I prefer to use just my fingers if possible, uh, although it's not always uh, uh, the best way to do it when you're um, tying on the smaller smaller side. So now I'll go ahead and do the same technique, but I've just stripped the one side to get it, give my hackle a little bit thinner look. And we're just gonna bring that over right on top. And you see how I'm, I can rotate and twist that. And tease it open. And now we can actually just take our thread. And you want to make sure your thread 
is basically right at where that hackle is. I've only got the one turn over. And I can place a few turns over. And now the pattern is a little bit more light and airy, which would be somewhat more in the line with uh, some of the sp actual spider patterns. I'm gonna take a couple of turns forward. I'm gonna reverse this stem and work it back into towards the hackle, tying that in reverse style or creating a little V wedge, right? You've got your stem coming forward. We're gonna reverse the stem. And now once you've done that, instead of using scissors, what I think is the better way is when your thread is pretty much in line with where the hackle is, I can probably come and turn back. You just wanna make sure you're not rolling over all your hackle and whatever. I think it caught one there. But uh, now we're just gonna take and just put a little pressure on the bobbin holder and you can kind of rotate this off or pop it off typically. There we go. Um, just like so. If you're not comfortable doing that, fingernail clippers are a great ally here. Um, but you can also get uh, your scissors involved if needed. And we'll just place a few other turns in, kind of working back and forth to build the head. And so now that this fly is basically done. Um, now, typically you're gonna be using some uh, orange thread or whatever colored thread that you like <clears throat> or are wanting to tie with. Um, so we're gonna color our head. I'm gonna actually just use an orange Sharpie here to do this. Uh, just like the rest of this session. Uh, but you could absolutely um, put a black head on for sure, a uh, brown head if you like. Um, you can really kind of play around with that. And again, like we talked about last week, I believe, um, if you color that thread, try to wrap it up quickly, and your marker will leach into that white thread a little bit better. So we're just gonna come forward, we're gonna, gonna come back, don't overdo it. Very easy to crowd that eye. I'm gonna color just a little bit more and uh, whip finish coming forward. Put about four turns in and that should do it. Uh, now with the orange Sharpie, what can happen that I've noticed is that uh, the, if you use super glue, it, it can change the color of that Sharpie marker, so it will no longer be orange, and it'll kind of fade it into this, if you see this um, kind of white, uh, uh, what am I, what, what's the word I'm looking for, like a meniscus color. Um, kind of like a, yeah, I don't, well, let's not get too graphic, but, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but it's very clear, uh, sort similar to like a runny nose, um, but uh, it can do that to the head and plus it can change it color. So, but if you're wanting to seal your head, uh, you can actually do that, but a much better option would just go ahead and, and be to use a little bit of a UV. And so you can take a little bit of solar res or your favorite one. I, I like solar res personally and just dot a little bit on. Uh, and you don't, this is absolutely not even necessary, but the, the UV glue, and they make colored UVs too that you can get, but uh, the UV will stop your head from changing color and actually uphold the orange. And as you can see, it's actually enhancing the color just a little bit. Uh, and we'll just give it a quick blast. We don't need a ton here, just, just a little bit. We'll do the job. And if uh, your UV light's not working super great, then don't be afraid to just take it out and let it sit in the sun for a few minutes and uh, the sun will take care of business for you. So, all right, well, that's kind of uh, the rundown on a partridge and orange. There's some options there for you so you can play around with. I mean, try the flashback, try it with a rib, try it without a rib, try it on different sizes. Um, if, you, uh, if you come across a situation where your hackle is too big and too long, uh, I've actually got some videos, uh, a couple of videos that you can go look up on how to uh, either uh, put your hackle into a dubbing loop and size it so that uh, it'll be where you want it. And speaking of that, I, I didn't mention and I should have. Uh, so when you're when you're sizing your hackle, what we what we're looking for is that the hackle basically just kind of comes inside the throat 
of the hook, which is this area right here. Uh, so basically you want it to either kiss the uh, 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 point or you want it to just kind of flow back into the bend. So kind of anything in between is absolutely acceptable. Uh, something right in between, I would think most people would consider ideal. And um, so that kind of, it's, you know, it's a soft tackle using partridge and they can be a little uh, little tricky at first, but it, overall it's a fairly easy pattern to tie and you can you can probably get good at them fairly well. Actually, a friend of mine, Shane Couch, loves tying these patterns, so I want to give out a, a shout out to him. Uh, and so if you're over on our Facebook group and Fly Tying for Beginners, you can actually find Shane and uh, he can give you a, a very broad <laughs> rundown of, uh, of uh, spider patterns. He just loves to tie them. Uh, great for bluegill, trout, uh, uh, those kind of species. So, uh, other than that, I'll leave it at that. So, uh, always appreciate a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share. Check us out over at flyvault.net. If you have not, we're doing things a little bit differently over there and giving you some digital tools as well. And uh, we're growing, we're, we're brand new over there. So, come check us out and you can support us that way, uh, which would be great. And uh, other than that, everybody, happy tying, take care, and I'll see you in week three.